Francois, tell us about your book, There is an Elephant in My Kitchen. Yeah, well, um, An Elephant in My Kitchen is a sequel of The Elephant Whisperer, written by Lawrence uh, now uh, eight years ago, nine years ago. Uh, it's a story of uh, what happened after he passed away in 2012 and the challenges uh, of uh, running a game reserve for someone who didn't know much about conservation. Now, anybody listening to your accent will realize that you're not originally South African. How did a Parisian end up in Zululand? Well, uh, 31 years ago, I uh, was waiting for a taxi in London. And the porter asked me, would you like to share your taxi with that man? I looked at the man and I said, no. <laughs> so that's uh, Lawrence had his first taste of French attitude. And, and that, to cut a long story short, we ended up sharing a taxi and uh, um, 10 months, 11 months later, I moved to South Africa. Can you tell us how an elephant ended up in your kitchen? That was a beautiful story. It was uh, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, my chef, Tom, uh, knocked at my window at 8 o'clock at night telling me there's a baby elephant in the garden who get, looks lost. Then we pushed her into my house and uh, we gave her some food and she had a little nap after eating. And after that, during that time, the game rangers were looking for the mother and the herd, which is completely unusual because, you know, with the communication skills of the elephants, how could they lose their, their baby? It was totally incredible. And so the rangers found the herd. We put the baby back at about one o'clock in the morning on the back of the pickup truck, the back key, and the, she was taken back to her mother. She was dropped in front of her mother, reunited, then monitored for a few days. But these stories in your book show what an amazing bond you have with those elephants. That's what everybody tells me. They've seen elephants everywhere in Africa or in South Africa, but they say they've never seen a herd behaving like ours. They've got feelings, they've got compassion, they express joy, they express grief, they express so many emotions, just like us humans. 20 years ago, Lawrence Anthony received a telephone call. He was offered a rock herd of elephants. Seven elephants arrived. Now, you would see 29 elephants directly behind us 20 years later. And they're not just elephants. It's part of the family here at Tula Tula, and each and every one of those elephants has a name and has a history. And I can actually see Nana, the old matriarch, just behind me. And Nana is still around, expressing her wisdom of an old lady, but Frankie is our new matriarch. And uh, she ends up, it's the third time she comes into my garden. Uh, up at the house up there, and there are electric wire. She's found a way to go across that electric wire that not one of the other one of the herd does. She's got an unbelievable way to put her foot on the right place so that she doesn't get electrocuted. Unbelievable. I mean, I was trying to work out the other day how she does. She does it, and then the herd, when she comes out of my garden, eventually, things like that, so they just trumpet, and the other day they were actually showing her, be careful because this one is working, this one is not working. I don't know what they were telling her, but one why wasn't working. So they were actually showing her the way to come out without being hurt. So maybe she's trying to get into my kitchen. I, don't I know. think she probably read the book as well. <laughs> maybe she wants to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> now, Francoise, when Lawrence unfortunately passed away, some people thought you would probably pack up and leave, but you are still here. I had never had the intention of leaving. You, you don't leave something that you've created like this. And you don't leave all the staff, the people, the, the place, the animals. So I had to carry on the legacy of Lawrence. That was the most important thing. But being surrounded by a wonderful team of people who knew the bush, that was, was so important for me. This is Tabo, one of the two rhinos here at Tula Tula. You don't really appreciate how big these gorgeous animals are until you're that close. What do you have to do to protect wildlife, especially the rhinos here at Tula Tula? We've got uh, um, anti-poaching unit uh, patrolling the whole place day and night, but we've got as well uh, armed protection for our rhinos 24 hours a day. The both of them have got GPS and satellite colors. 
and we dehorn them as well. So we know where they are at all times. These are two little orphans that we, 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 we got nine years ago. And the book tells the story of another baby elephant. It's a beautiful story because that little baby, another little baby elephant, one we called, uh, had been playing with snares. And he must have put his, his head in a snare. So his head was completely blocked. He couldn't feed from the mother. So he would have died. And that little baby, uh, that baby elephant was brought by his mother towards a game ranger who was doing a game drive. And, and the mother just pushed him to show the ranger, look, my baby has got a problem. The ranger called my game reserve manager, Vuzi, who arrived and same thing, the mother pushed the baby towards him to say help. Called the veterinarian, it was like a cowboy mission. The helicopter darted the baby pushed away the whole herd, landed, took away the snare from the face of the baby, gave the reversal drug. And then what happened afterwards, uh, the baby was reunited with the family. Uh, he could feed again from the mother. That's a beautiful rescue story. But what's amazing is that that evening, I invited to thank the whole security team and rangers and everyone who helped for that rescue. I uh, invited them at the lodge for a drink everyone at seven o'clock at night. And guess who was at the entrance of the lodge? The whole herd of elephants. You see, normal elephants would have been hiding into the bush. It was a traumatizing day, helicopter, darting, baby, you know. No, they were all at the entrance of the lodge. They were coming for a drink as well. So they're part of the team. And they were maybe coming to say thank you, who knows.